Hi guys, you're here with Jessica Camo, also known as Miss Rose, and I am representing Code Connect. Today, we're going to go over how to start your very first Unity project, and we're going to be talking today about how to actually make objects move. So let's get started. All right, so we clicked Unity Hub. We're going to click New Project. We're using Unity Hub 3.0.1 and editor version 2020.3.30. We're going to be starting out with just the basic first person core. So I'm going to select that and I'm just going to rename this. I'll call this class example one. All right, so we're going to save that. We're going to create that. All right, so now we have loaded our project. So let's get started. We're going to not start out with this default because we're going to just start from scratch. We're going to go to new scene, built basic in, basic built in. All right, so we're going to start by making ourselves a floor. I just set the Y depth for this. And I just set the scale. We're going to create ourselves a little ball to move around. We're also going to create ourselves uh, two different types of materials. But before we do that, we're going to clean up our file structure. So we're going to create a file. We're going to call this starter. And we're just going to add in all this random stuff. There we go. Create a new folder for materials. All right, so we're gonna open that up and create. We're gonna create a material, and we're also going to be creating uh, something called a physics material. It's all the way down here. So for this one, we're gonna just rename this as player or just object, I, I'm just going to call it player. We're going to change that to, let's say, green. And you can either drag this onto the sphere or you can drag it on um, to the sphere in the scene. Either one will work. So we're going to drag it to this one, that automatically applies it. Now we're looking to have this ball be bouncy, so we want to add physics. So we're also going to add this. Now that is going to appear in the Sphere Collider and the new physics material that we just added. So we're going to double click the new physics material and it's going to open up this value in the inspector. We're going to set the bounciness equal to 1. Now there's one more thing we have to create and that is a rigid body. We want to have gravity affect this object. So we're going to add component. We're going to add a rigid body. You can do that by typing in RI. That'll pull this into the top. And now that I have that, I'm just going to pull this all the way up a bit higher and I'm going to play. What should happen is this should drop down and it should bounce and hit and eventually calm down. There we go. So we got our start of our little bouncy ball. Next, we're going to create a script. So let's create a folder. Call this scripts. We're going to Oh, we already got a scripts, so I'm actually just going to delete that. We're going to start in here and create a new C script. We'll call it move object. You can call this whatever you want. However, you can't have a space in this because it will mess up the naming for the file. So I'm going to drag and drop this script onto the sphere because that's what we're going to want to be moving. So that will show up. I'm just going to minimize these so you can see it. That's going to show up right there. So let's get started. Let's double click this. That's going to open up Visual Studio. All right. So not now. You're going to start out with a default of two functions of void start and void update. Void start happens only one time at the very start of the game or when or at the very start of the initiation of the script. 
and then void update happens nonstop once per frame. So that means that if you have a really fast computer that can do a lot of frames per second, this will go a lot faster than somebody who has a slower computer and doesn't have as many frame rates per second. So today we're going to be dealing with two different types of variables. We're going to be dealing with something called a bool, which is either a true or a false. And we're going to be dealing with floats, which can be any number, including any type of decimal. Whereas an integer value can only be whole numbers such as 1, 2, 3, 4. A float value can be 0 0.00001, etc. So we're going to start out. We're going to create a public. We're going to say bool forward. So this is a true or false uh, variable that we can set. Next, we need to say, when do we want to go forward? Well, we want to go forward when we hit a certain key. So let's take a look at our handy dandy search bar. Unity on key down. That's going to pull up a lot of references related to Unity Manual. So let's take a look. This is an example given by Unity documentation at 2020.3 20, for the version. So that's good. We're going to grab this part right here. Now keep in mind, this is being put inside the void update. So I minimize that. We're going to come all the way back to update. And we want to go forward. Now, mo normally people go forward on W. So we're going to change that to W. We're going to delete this. This just prints the fact that if we press W, it would send this message to the console, which I'll get to in just a moment. You can either have print or you can have more commonly as debug.log. This is my preferred method in terms of sending something to a console. We went forward. All right, so if I press this, save all, go back to our Unity, and try to play this on our sphere, we're going to have one variable that we've created so far, a forward Boolean value. So when I press W, this should become true. So I'll press W. Now the reason why it's not becoming true is because we have not changed this setting here, which I'm about to show you how to do. You have switch active uh, input handling to input system.package. You can fix that by going to edit, I'm going to deactivate the play, go to edit, go to project settings, go to player, scroll all the way down, and make sure that you click both. We're going to apply, we're going to save everything. Uh, it's asking us to save the name of our scene. I'm just going to call it game and we're going to save. So that's going to close everything down real quick and then it's going to open it back up. So I'm just going to wait for that. Alrighty, so right down here is the scene that we created called game. So I'm open that back up and we're going to play. So let's go back to what we were doing. If we click sphere, we wanted to see if this would become true if I press W. So I'm press it now. And it says right down here, we went forward. So I'm just going to drag this console screen over so that way you can see it. So every time I press W, this adds to this console. So the reason why this is not being set to true is because we haven't set that up yet. So let's do that now. I'm going to bring this console back over to my other screen. And let's start. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, if we press W, we want forward to equal true. Now. We have to make sure that this is exact spelling as this down here. Capitals are important, but I'm just going to make this capital because I like working with capital on the beginning of my words. 
So we also need to be able to say when this is going to be false because we don't want to be moving forward all the time. We want to stop moving forward when we're no longer pressing W. So if W is up, we want to be forward set to false. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little bit easier to look at. And I'm going to create something called commenting my code to forward slashes and I'm just going to call this forward. Once I have that, I'm going to test it. So file, save as, and go back to Unity. So let's take a look. I'm going to play. So every time I press W on uh, this, so if I'm holding it down, I'm letting it go, holding it down, letting it go. We now have an option for W. So we're going to do the same for W, A, S, and D. So let's take a look. We have forward public. So one, two, three. We're going to want to go back. We're going to want to go right and we're going to want to go left so I'm going to copy this or paste it one two three we have forward we're going to have back we're going to have right and we're going to have left so because we want these keys to match what we're doing, when we go back, we're going to be pressing the S because W, A, S, D are usually the keys that people use. So we want this to be S. When we go right, we're going to be using D. So we're going to change this to D. And when we go right, oh, sorry, when we go left, we want to use A. So the next thing we have to do is we have to make sure these values that are being set are exactly what we want to be set up here. So when we go uh, back, we want to be using this variable. So copy, I'm going to paste that here and paste that there. When we go right, we want to use the right variable. Copy, paste, paste. When we go left, we want to use the left variable. So copy, paste, and paste. All right, so we have the first part of our script pretty much set up. So we're going to save that, and we're going to do a quick test run. So if I play this, I should be able to light these up. So I'm pressing W, not pressing W, pressing D, not pressing D, pressing A, not pressing A, pressing S, not pressing S. So I'm able to go throughout these. Now if you notice, I can actually have more than one press at the same time, which will allow us to move the object not just in straight, but we can also move it at a diagonal, which will be really cool. So now we're actually going to work on what happens when we actually move the object. So in order to move the object, we're going to write a new if statement. If forward is equal to true, we have to have two equal signs when we're dealing with booleans. So if forward is equal to true, then we're going to make something happen. So when we're dealing with any type of transform, we're dealing with the object that the script is attached to. So we're going to say, we're going to look at the object that the script is attached to. We're going to use a special component called translate. And we're going to be getting the direction, the forward direction of that object, the forward direction of transform dot forward. And we're going to be multiplying that by a speed. And we're going to be multiplying that speed by time dot delta time. So what this means is that we're going to be grabbing 
the object that the script is attached to. And then we're going to be looking at what is the forward direction of that object. And then we're going to be multiplying it by a float value that we're going to set up here. And that's going to be multiplied by time dot delta dot time. Now the importance of this is that it makes the time consistent because this happens every frame per second. So if somebody has a fast computer, they could move a lot faster than somebody else. So let's create a new variable. We're going to comment this out. So comment, we're going to call this movement. And we're going to create a speed. So to create a speed, we're going to have to create a float variable. So public float speed. And that's, that variable has to be the exact same spelling as this. So when I go forward, the object is going to go forward. I'm going to save all, and I'm going to go back to the game. So before we continue, we have to make sure we have a speed set, because 0 times anything is just going to be 0. So let's set that to 3. So I'm going to play. And I'm going to press W to go forward. We're going forward every time I press. However, none of the other keys need to be working for back, left, and right because we haven't set those up yet. So let's do that now. So let's go back to our scripts and let's quickly do that. So we're going to grab forward, we're going to copy that, and we're going to paste that right down here. And we're going to be using back. So we're going to rename this as back. Now normally a person might think, oh, well maybe I can just change forward to back. But when you try typing in back, nothing really pops up. If you notice, you can't really have a place, there is no option for that. So another way you can get around that is you can stick with forward, but instead of having a positive direction, let's change this to a negative direction. So we're doing the inverse. So we're we're multiplying everything by a negative number, so this will allow us to go back. So let's file, save as, and let's take a look. So we're going to play. I press W to go forward. I'm going to press S to go back, forward, back, forward, back. Now if I press both at the same time, notice I don't go anywhere because the speed is the exact same. So if I'm pressing W and then I press S, I come to a stop. Or if I let go of W, I end up going back. All right, so let's quickly create the left and right option for our player, our object. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to paste a new one. And I'm going to call this one right. Because we've got to match the Boolean value that we set up here. So right. So if right equals true we want to first, we want to be going in a positive direction and we want to see if there's a right option. Pardon the pun. R I G H T. There we go. So we're going to move right in that direction. Now let's create a left one. So we're going to name this like we have it up here. So L E F T. Now there is no option to go left on this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go right. We're going to go in a negative direction right. So I'm going to file, save as, and then after that, we're going to go back to our game. And play. Alright, so now I'm able to go forward, left, back, right in every single direction that I want to go. And that's how you get started with moving an object. You can use this as a basis if you just want to have objects moving and do some really cool things. All right, my name is Jessica Camo and this was for Code Connect. Thank you for watching and have a great day.